The Ping Study is a collaborative effort of leading child development researchers around the country who are collecting data on brain development, uh, development of mental and emotional functions, and detailed information about genetic variation in what is now well over a thousand young research volunteers ranging in age from three years old to 20. Ping is unique in a number of ways. First, it is the only imaging and genetics study of its size that includes information about children ranging in age all the way across the childhood age range, from the preschool age range to young adulthood. Also, Ping sets new standards for brain imaging in children, including several new improvements in the methods that particularly address the challenges of imaging young children. The design of our study allows us to ask important new questions about genetic variation. Uh, for example, instead of asking simply how genetic variation relates to differences among us in our, um, in our brains and in our mental characteristics, uh, we're hoping to ask questions about how genetic variation may influence development itself, that is the developing brain and the developing mental and emotional functions of the child. The answers to these questions are crucial in our efforts to prevent adverse outcomes of development, such as behavioral disorders, like addiction. First, we show that structural MRI scans of the brain can be used to predict a child's age with much greater accuracy than has been possible with other types of biological measures. In 885 participants from 3 to 20 years old, Using a combination of brain measures from MRI scans, we predicted everyone's age within about a year on average, explaining more than 92% of the variance. What this means is that we've uncovered a developmental clock of sorts within the brain, a biological signature of maturation that accurately reflects age differences regardless of other kinds of differences that exist across people. This essentially means to measure where a person lies along a continuum of biological development made up of periods of different kinds of growth and changes over time, which you might call phases. And in any large-scale imaging study, image acquisition is critical if you want to get good results. So in the PING study, we spent a lot of time standardizing the acquisition protocol because we are scanning from 10 different sites across the country 12 different scanners from three different scanner manufacturers. In addition to that, we integrate distortion correction that's scanner specific. So every individual scanner get, has its distortion mapped though, so that we can correct those distortions later on. Ping investigators are working together to ensure that the methods used, particularly the brain imaging methods, are the most sophisticated methods available for use in children and also that they're applied carefully and consistently across our sites so that we can combine the results to pose interesting new questions. For example, the question that was posed in the, in the current report about the basic biology of brain development. Some of the most significant changes that we observe are a decrease in the cortical thickness, so the thickness of the gray matter uh, of the brain over time. In addition, we also see uh, concurrently an increase in the cortical surface area up to age 12, 13, that age range, uh, at which point it sort of levels off and maybe decreases a little bit over time. Uh, from our diffusivity measures, we also see various changes in tissue property. Uh, you know, it's different, different in every structure. No single brain measure closely reflects the child's age across the years because changes of different kinds cascade dynamically as development progresses. But taken together, the measurements reveal a phenotype that's tightly linked to how long the person has been around. At any given point in your development, who you are and your maturity in general is related not just to genetic, but also external factors. Um, we, all, we all know that genetics play a very important role. Uh, to what extent this role is, we, we are, we're not entirely sure. One of the benefits of the PING study is we did collect genetic information on all of the children that we scanned for the study. And hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to determine to, to exactly what extent genetic influences affect certain structures of the brain and how that influences behavior.